live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. December 15, 1984. We're down in Shreveport, Louisiana at Independence Stadium for this Independence Bowl between the Air Force Falcons and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Unfortunately for Virginia Tech, everything that could go wrong in this game does, as after a great season, it came to an extremely disappointing end, with Air Force defeating Virginia Tech 23-7, and with the Falcons outscoring the Hokies 20-0 over the final three quarters of action. It was the kind of performance that, if you're a fan of Virginia Tech, you don't forget, and if you ever got a chance to go back to Shreveport to erase the bad memories from that abomination of a bowl game, you do it. Well, in 1989, five years after that game, Virginia Tech seemed like they were going to get that opportunity to play in Shreveport again, and to be one of the two participants at the Independence Bowl. And then, to the shock of a lot of people, they weren't. And the reason why? It had nothing to do with the committee snubbing them of a spot or anything like that. Rather, it had to do with an absolutely costly mistake made by Virginia Tech before the start of the season that not only wound up robbing the Hokies of a bowl spot, but wound up costing them over $500,000, which was not chump change by any means, especially back in the late 80s. Because in 1989, Virginia Tech made a critical mistake that more than 30 years later is still talked about by those who remember it, and by those who didn't get the opportunity to play in one final bowl game. And this is the story behind the costliest bowl mistake in the history of Virginia Tech football. Before I talk about the actual mistake in question, we need some context to understand how good Virginia Tech was, and in particular, what the Independence Bowl was going through, because it was not pretty. What you're watching right now are highlights from the 1987 Independence Bowl between Washington and Tulane, which the Huskies of Washington won by a final score of 24-12. And the reason for that is because this bowl game spelled an absolute disaster financially. I don't just mean that the bowl game lost money. I mean that they were badly in the red, to the point where no one knew whether or not they'd be able to survive in 1988. As Mike Collier, the chairman of the Independence Bowl, said on everything, we took a bath last year. When we got together in March and figured everything, it was seven times worse than what we thought. Imagine expecting to lose money, and then you lose seven times more than what you thought you lost. That's how bad it was. And it was about to get even worse, when in 1988, the bowl game didn't have a corporate sponsor, which cost them $80,000, and didn't have a national television deal, which cost them $125,000. The Independence Bowl was on life support, and was truly hanging on by a thread. They needed an absolutely innovative thing to try and salvage this game. And to their credit, the Independence Bowl actually came up with a somewhat brilliant solution. Their bowl game was deemed an afterthought. So what if we made our bowl game the destination that teams aspired to go to? Like how Big Ten teams wanted to go to the Rose Bowl. Well, in 1988, the Independence Bowl established the Independence Bowl Football Association, where they took some of the independent schools and threw them together in a mini-conference of sorts, where the top team in this association would automatically become the host team for the Independence Bowl. The original IBFA consisted of five independent schools, consisting of Southern Mississippi, Tulsa, Memphis State, Cincinnati, and Virginia Tech. And it was simple. Whoever had the best record amongst the five schools got an automatic bid to the Independence Bowl, provided that they met the bowl eligibility rules and didn't have a losing record. It seemed like an absolute no-lose situation for these schools. It was incredibly difficult for independents, since they had no conference affiliations, to make it to a bowl game. Now, they had an automatic tie-in. And if the team exceeded expectations and got invited to a New Year's Day bowl game, they weren't tied to the Independence Bowl, and they could play in that game without a financial penalty. On the surface, this idea seemed genius. And while Southern Miss got the bid in 1988, in 1989, it looked like the IBFA was going to have this team right here as its automatic bid. Head coach Frank Beamer got off to a pretty rough start with the Hokies. In 1987, his team went just 2-9, and, and they didn't do much better in 1988 when they went 3-8. Five wins in two seasons is not good, no matter how you slice it. However, 
Despite no one really having any expectations for Beamer and the Hokies in 1989 because of that, they stunned a ton of people and they played some really good football. For the first time in Beamer's tenure as a head coach, the Hokies finished the season with a winning record, going 6-4-1, and, and they had some absolutely big wins in there. They had multiple shutout victories when they defeated Temple 23-0 and Vanderbilt 18-0. They went on the road to Raleigh to play NC State, a team that started the season off 6-0 and was ranked as high as number 12 at one point, and they won that game 25-23. And in their biggest result, without a doubt, they went on the road to Morgantown, playing West Virginia, and they won 12-10. Virginia Tech had lost 8 straight games at Morgantown, and the last time they won there was in 1967, when they were known as VPI. Remember, this was a West Virginia team that was playing for the national championship the year before at the Fiesta Bowl, and entered this game against the Hokies unbeaten. And Virginia Tech just came in there and pulled off a stunning upset. Thanks to an absolutely suffocating defense that allowed just 16.4 points per game, which ranked 14th in Division 1A out of 106 teams, the Hokies were a force to be reckoned with for the first time under Frank Beamer. And if we look at the teams in the IBFA, it was clear that Virginia Tech was the top team in the bunch. Tulsa was 6-5 so they had a worse winning percentage than Virginia Tech at 6-4-1. And, and Southern Miss, Cincinnati, and Memphis State were not bowl eligible, as they all had losing records. So Virginia Tech would get a chance to redeem themselves for that 1984 performance. They were going to Shreveport to play in the Independence Bowl, and were going bowling not just for the first time since 1986, but for the first time under Frank Beamer. At least, that's what everyone thought. However... The Independence Bowl threw a curveball into the plans when not only did they not invite Virginia Tech, opting to invite Tulsa instead, but when Virginia Tech, despite their very good season, didn't even make it to a bowl game. On the surface, this seems incredibly unfair. Doesn't that defeat the entire purpose of the IBFA? That seems like Virginia Tech signed a contract, and now the Independence Bowl was going to back out on that contract costing the Hokies a fair amount of money in the process. And you would be 100% right if Virginia Tech was still a part of the IBFA. But as it turns out, prior to the 1989 season, the Hokies decided that it would be a good idea to drop out. Yep, Virginia Tech dropped out of the IBFA before the start of the 1989 season. As Athletic Director Dave Brain said on why he thought this would be a good move, we thought we could get in position for a better bowl. Would I do it over again? Obviously, hindsight is always better than foresight. Wait, hold, hold up. You thought you could get in position for a better bowl game? You're an independent. Unless you finish the season ranked inside the top 25, you had no shot at making a bowl game because of the lack of conference tie-ins. Heck, even Northern Illinois, who went 9-2 that season as an independent, didn't go bowling. And you guys were, hang on, let me check my notes, 5-17 and 17 over the past two seasons. 5-17. and 17. And you somehow thought it was a good idea to drop out of the IBFA. Even though the IBFA offers no penalty whatsoever to decline the bid if you play in a New Year's Day bowl game? The IBFA was a complete no-lose situation for you guys. Especially since you only won five games over the past two seasons, and no one in their right mind with all the ranked opponents you had on your schedule thought you had a good shot this season, and you dropped out? That seems incredibly ill-advised, especially when head coach Frank Beamer is expressing his disappointment, and without calling out his AD, is silently wondering what the heck they were thinking. As Beamer said on the whole thing, and why Virginia Tech left the IBFA for some inexplicable reason, I don't know all the details. It's kind of like a football game. You see what happens, and it's easier to make the decisions. It's always easier when you're looking back. I think this team deserves a bowl trip. But if it's not to be, it's not to be. But that doesn't mean that Virginia Tech didn't try to get into a bowl game. Because in a laughably bad move that had a negative percent chance at working, they called up the Independence Bowl, apologized, and asked if they could get back into the IBFA and play in the game. Yeah, a little too late for that, isn't it? Virginia Tech was that girlfriend in a great steady relationship who cheated on you to get with her high school crush. And then, when she realized that her high school crush was a total loser, and she realized what she just threw away with her relationship, 
she comes back and begs for forgiveness, realizing that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Naturally, the boyfriend slams the door in her face and says, Absolutely not. You had your chance and you blew it. Have fun. Virginia Tech was trying that same strategy and hoping that the Independence Bowl would be open to forgiving them. And the Independence Bowl, to the surprise of no one, said, yeah, that's not happening. As Joel Thomas, the president of the selection committee for the Independence Bowl, said quite bluntly on Virginia Tech's chances of getting invited to the game, they've got no chance. Not even a we're leaving the door open, or we're going to wait to see how the bowl picture plays out, or it's unlikely. Just a flat out 0% chance. That's how badly Virginia Tech screwed over the Independence Bowl, and how much the Independence Bowl wanted nothing whatsoever to do with the Hokies anymore. Thomas then continued, saying, The decision to leave the IBFA hurt them a lot. It was an indication that they weren't interested in playing in our bowl. One of the reasons the association is there is to give a team that doesn't normally have a chance to play in a bowl game a chance. With Virginia Tech, that was the whole reason for them to be in there. And Virginia Tech feels that now that they're not in the association. Translation, we gave you a golden opportunity. You felt that the bowl game was beneath you. And now that you realize that it's not, you want us to forget like this whole thing ever happened? And you want us to accept you back with open arms? Fat chance. So when the 1989 bowl season was being played, it was Tulsa against Oregon in the Independence Bowl. And it was Virginia Tech sitting at home on their couch watching bowl season unfold without playing in it. For the seniors who never got a chance to play another football game again, all because of some absolutely insane decision-making on the part of the athletic director, this one hurt. And how much money did Virginia Tech lose by dropping out of the IBFA and by not playing in the Independence Bowl? They lost a minimum of $500,000, which, when adjusted for inflation today, comes out to $1.2 million. I don't care who you are. Having $1.2 million is better than not having $1.2 million. That's quite a lot of money that the Hokies lost out on, all because they decided to opt out of a bowl organization that they had no logical reason to opt out of. Making a mistake can be a tough pill to swallow, but some mistakes are easier to handle than others. And I think that this mistake, where you cost seniors a chance to play one more game and go bowling, where you cost your head coach the chance to have extra practices, where you cost your team some exposure, and where you cost your athletic department and your school the equivalent of $1.2 million was a pretty bad one on so many levels. Today, the idea of Virginia Tech not playing in a bowl game seems absurd, as they've made one every year since 1993, minus the COVID season in 2020. But back in 1989, when they only made it to three bowl games in the last 20 years, and only won one bowl game before in program history, which was the 1986 Peach Bowl against NC State, that wasn't the case. And even though that could have changed in 1989, it didn't. Because in 1989, Virginia Tech made the costly mistake of declaring their independence from the Independence Bowl. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.